Thank you for joining us. So he says, um, I was reading this by James Stalker. He says, so in that fall, Tiberian sections took over, which is, which Paul calls the flesh or the side of the human nature that looks toward the world in time. They've taken possession of the throne and completely ruled the life while the spirit side of man that looks to God in eternity has been dethroned, reduced to a condition of inefficiency and death. Christ restores the lost predominance. That's what I like. Christ restores the lost predominance of the spirit of man by taking possession of it by his own spirit. His spirit dwells in the human spirit now, vivifying it and sustaining it in such growing strength that it becomes more and more the sovereign part of man's constitution. The man ceases to be carnal. See that? Once Christ comes in you and he is led, he becomes spiritual. He is led by God's spirit. He becomes more and more harmonious with all that is holy and divine. Now, it's a process, isn't it? That as time goes on, as you feed, you and I will become more and more harmonious, more and more acclimated, more and more conscious and aware. If we're following, if we're continuing to let the word dwell in us richly, if we're continuing to abide in the vine, amen, this truth will get greater in us. Doesn't mean that challenges and afflictions and trials won't come. Now, let me just tell you this week. Here's a good example. <clears throat> Before, um, this week, this last, I don't know, Monday night, I came under a serious attack. Um, I don't know. Someone says, was it COVID? I don't know. I've, my, I've continued to hold fast my confession of faith. I'm COVID free. But I can tell you this, within a period of hours, deliverance came. And you know, I just looked at it. I hadn't even fought sickness for three years. I didn't even know that. It was 2019 was the last time I fought off a flu. 2019, when I came under that same heavy attack in November, when I was working at the restaurant. And, you know, I, I don't know. I didn't run out and take a test. I mean, I just did what I had to do with the word. And, uh, you know, I can tell you this. Here's my point I want to emphasize is that God delivers, man. God's faithful. Amen. And he's not going to, and, and I think sometimes, I was talking to Rita, and she's like, well, the devil's going to attack. Sometimes we think the devil's not going to attack. But, you know, the devil's always attacking. He was attacking Jesus. He was attacking Paul. He's always on the move. And no matter how sober and vigilant we are, the enemy will come, but he'll always be defeated, friend. Recognize that. He'll always be defeated. No weapon forged against you and I will prosper. If we're doing our part. Now, my door swung wide open to the enemy. And I'm just giving him free access. Well, pff, I don't really have a ground to stand on, do I? I'm allowing darkness to seep into my life. So I don't. My authority is, is kind of put on hold. How many understand? Because the devil's having a right in my life. You know? And that can happen many ways. That can happen through unforgiveness in your heart. That can happen through outright rebellion or something. And you all, we all know. Amen? I'm not talking about trying to probe for some area that you're disobedient in, that you don't out... You, how many understand outright recognize right out of the gate? I'm not talking about something hidden in the subconscious of the subconscious. <laughs> I'm talking about something you know outright that is, is out of order, you know. Um, that's what I mean by giving place to the enemy, right? Not allowing stuff. So um, so anyway, but praise God, you know, and that's why I didn't come on Tuesday because I didn't know. But I was fine, 100%. I went and worked yesterday. I'm going to work tomorrow. My point I'm trying to tell you, though, is, you know, I, I thought about you guys. I thought, well, I don't know. I mean, I don't believe it's COVID, but I don't want to put people at risk if that was something that came upon, came upon me. Amen. So, uh, but the, the greater truth is, uh, you know, and the Lord actually told me in the middle of it, I heard the Lord say, he says, I, I, 
you know, because sometimes you're going through a, an affliction and here's how the devil breaks, tries to break you down. You learn stuff through what you go through. Do you know the devil does this to people a lot of times? Let's just say you get attacked by COVID and you've been saying I'm COVID free and you've been COVID free for three years or whatever, or however long it's been there. And let's just say you get attacked and it was COVID. The devil goes, see, the word don't work. You know, you know that happens to a lot of people or somebody dies and then they go, see, healing ain't right. That don't work. I mean, get what I'm saying. So then he gets them into a bunch of unbelief. He gets them depressed. He gets them discouraged and he gets them defeated to where they're actually then they default to their own, right? They default to their own natural ability. Well, that's foolishness. And the Lord brought up to me the other day, you know, Paul was bitten by a snake poisonous snake remember that acts 27 28 he was bitten by a poisonous snake god delivered him why did the snake bite him don't know the enemy comes he comes with a bite <laughs> right but here's the reality the life of jesus will neutralize whatever the enemy tries to sink into you Glory to God. That's the truth. And with what all is going on in the world today, I'll tell you this. If you do get a cold or you get a sick or whatever, and, you know, be wise. There's a lot of people getting sick right now. And I saw there's a lot of churches that are closed down. Now, here's something just naturally to think, think about. You can't close the church or the world down every time. Just naturally speaking, you got to go with it. Work it, let it work its way through. How many of you understand? Just naturally, I'm not even talking about church world, I'm talking about that out there in the real world. People that are more susceptible, that are, you know, like elderly people or people that have pre existing issues and stuff, they should really do their most diligence to protect themselves, right? But I'm just saying, in a normal, in a normal setting, in, in, society not society but in in the world there's always going to be diseases and bacteria and viruses and everything else and i was just looking to see you know some of the differences and you really can't tell the difference between a flu and a covid or uh, uh you know except for uh, fevers and and when it's transmittable and all this stuff i was just looking doing things but i did notice this i thought well it's interesting to look at all this because everything gets down to your immune system that your immune system goes right away to battle and, and it starts to, uh, I forget the, I can't remember now, man. I got to write this stuff down, but it, it had to do with your T cells, right? Oh, your, your white blood cells go to work right away against when there's an invasion by a virus or, a, or a, an infirmity or something. And so that's why your body reacts the way it does. And so what I was thinking about was, it's interesting, but you and I, I mean, Romans 8, 11 right there gives it to you. And I think a lot of the stuff that you and I have to do is like one of the things the Lord told me is make sure you maintain a merry heart. Amen. Serious. Because you don't want, you know, the devil will try, like I told my mother, the devil will try to get you into an overly serious mode. You know, and you need to be in a place of spiritual rest where you're just resting saying, ah, it's a done deal. Jesus already bore your sicknesses. He already carried your sorrows and pains of punishment. With his stripes, you are healed. Whether you got a symptom, whether you got this, that, or the other going on. By his stripes, you and I are healed well and sound. Amen. And I think a lot of uh, what's gone on in the world, there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of fear. There's a lot of fear. Now, I'll tell you this. Um, and obviously, how many of you know, infirmities, uh, it affects people in different light, doesn't it? I mean, like me, I, I can be honest with you. It, you know, I can't say if it was a flu or COVID because I didn't run out and get a test. Am I scared to take a test? No, I just had no reason to go out. I don't need, that's for me. 
but the reality is this, uh, you know, um, well, I'm not going to say that, but uh, we all live in different levels. How many you understand? And I've been around many COVID people that were, you know, and never got COVID. So, but here's the point I'm saying. Your immune system, you got to keep your immune system strong. And keep it strong in the word, amen? And by your affirmation. So here's my point. The Lord told me too, he's like, I haven't heard you say I'm COVID free because in the middle of adversity, the devil's like, you got COVID. When you start hearing thoughts come to you, you know that's not God. It's the devil. And he's trying to whittle you down and wear your faith down. Amen. And so you have to combat that in the middle of the adversity, in the middle of the fight. That's why it's called fight the good fight of faith. Come on now. It's a fight of faith, isn't it? It's a fight. Just like your immune system says, no entrance. Come on now. Right? If, if some virus or whatever comes to you, your immune system says, no, I'm not allowing you. I don't permit you. So it responds. Right? And that's why you get like muscle aches. That's what it was. You get muscle pain. Because what happens is your immune system responds to whatever kind of attack that's come in. So I'll, I'll Google it again for you later. I can't remember exactly the process, how it defined it, but it was interesting. So my point is, is there's a fight. There's a fight, man. There's a fight in the unseen realm. There's a fight in the natural realm. You just got to know what you're fighting with and who's fighting for you and who's fighting with you. Amen. Look at Isaiah 53. Isaiah 53. And then I want it to go over to, I want to show you. Uh, this song, Isaiah 53. And there's so much I wanted to read. Isaiah 50, we're just going to read some scriptures this morning, okay? That's what we're going to do. We're just going to read some scriptures. I want you to see this also, though, and uh, I think it was, let me get over there. Hold your finger in there, and then I want to go to uh, Hosea 5. You're going to go to Hosea 5, and then you're also going to be in Habakkuk, okay? Habakkuk. We start out last week in Habakkuk 2. I want you to see this first. Let's look in Hosea 5. Hosea 5. Verse 13, it says, When Ephraim saw his sickness, and Judah saw his wound, then went Ephraim to the Assyrian and sent King Jerab, yet could he not heal nor cure you of your wound. Interesting, isn't it? We've seen the same thing with Asa. Why is it that these people that are basically, during that time, believers, they look to everything else. When they see their sickness, they see their, look at America. Look at many Christians. I mean, no matter what goes on, I'm looking unto Jesus. Jesus is my healer. Amen. Matter if you have a symptom, Jesus is my healer. I'm not looking to man. I'm not looking to modern medicine. Nothing wrong with that, but I'm not going to look to it. I'm going to look to the word, look to the cross. I'm going to look to what he said. I'm going to, I'm going to look to that. You can have pains and you can go like, you can have, uh, ibuprofen. you can have different, every issue there is in your life. Jesus can deal with it. You can have emotional problems. So the world tells you, go see a psychiatrist. 
And I, do you know I've known lots of people, and I'm not against psychologists and psychiatrists. But I'll tell you this, the word can deal with your suki, your soul, your emotions, your mind, if you're willing. There's lots of people, though, that, see, they have to go to a psychiatrist because they need help. But I'll tell you, if you'll be transformed by the renewing of your mind, the Lord restores my soul. So there's areas. All of us have been fractured. We didn't have perfect upbringings. We've uh, been flawed. We've had challenges. But guess who gets in there and works? The true psychologist, Jesus. Dr. Jesus comes in. But see, that's why Jesus just ain't for church, man. <laughs> Jesus don't go, just go to church on Sunday, hallelujah. And then, you know, you did, I did my church duty. Jesus works in your life, man to restore, to heal, to bring back, amen? Restore the years, the canker worm, palmer worm, and caterpillar have eaten up. Now, a lot of Christians don't want that, though. They want to go to church and say, give me a blessing. But they don't realize that blessing will be contingent upon your faith. And if your faith can't apprehend deeper things, then you won't be able to access what God has for you. Sometimes there's issues of the heart and, and that need to be dealt with. How many understand? So Jesus works in there. He's a psychologist. He's a, he, he's a physician of the body. Every area he wants to work in. Amen. And he, an amazing thing is that the word is built, man, right into your system and start dealing with these things. But what I found amazing is how many, like, People look to everything natural before they'll look to God, before they'll look to Jesus. Look over in Habakkuk. Let me see if I find Habakkuk. Oh, there was somewhere I was. Oh, just, just keep your finger there in Habakkuk. So we talked about, here we go, in Habakkuk, we talked about, he says, uh, Habakkuk 2, I will stand upon my watch and set me upon a tower and I'll watch and I will see what he said says unto me and what i'll answer uh when i'm reproved the lord said write the vision now make it plain so the lord says here's a vision see watch before him and see and we talked about last week that jesus prayed all night he he went before the father and god gave him direction he gave him a purpose he gave him vision and so you know uh paul tells us right here look in um acts 26 Acts 26. All right, here we go. Oh, glory. Verse 19. He says, Whereupon, O King Agrippa, I was not disobedient to the heavenly vision. Now, I'm just going to, I just want to share this real quickly. The heavenly vision. Now, notice Paul, who's he standing before? president whoever not some just regular joe schmo he tells him i was not disobedient to the heavenly vision what's the heavenly vision the heavenly vision is isaiah 53 that's the heavenly vision look he tells you right here go back acts 26 all gives his testimony Paul gives his testimony. He says, verse 13, and at midnight, O king, I saw in the way a light from heaven above the brightness of the sun shining about me. He's just giving his testimony and, and them that journey with me. And when we're all fallen to the earth, I heard a voice saying in a Hebrew tongue, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? It's hard for you to go against the pricks. That's a good one, isn't it? God's first word to you is, you're an arrogant person, and it's very hard for you to go against this. <laughs> you guys didn't get that. That's the first thing God says to him. It wasn't, hey, Saul, I love you. Hey, Saul, 
like all these sensual, hey, Saul, I love you. Come and experience the community and the love. That's not the word. That's not his first encounter. You know what his first encounter is? Hey, Saul, I think you're all that. Your face right now and let me let you know it's hard for you my friend you ain't going very far While you're on your face on the ground is that the god of love absolutely absolutely that love hit him so hard it knocked him off his horse it was love wasn't it down gave him a personal visitation. Knocked him right off his high horse. Smacked him right to the ground. Leveled his ego and his pride. And then told him, uh, Paul, hard for you, friend. Hard for you. I like that. You know, Saul, You've been killing a lot of Christians and persecuting. And I really know that you just need a hug. You've been neglected as a kid and you never really had enough huggies. And so I want to just let you know how much I love you, Saul, and that Jesus died for you, Saul. And he loves you so much. It, please stop killing all the Christians and persecuting the church, Saul. And just, I want to welcome you with open arms into our church. Is that is that what God the Father did to this person? No. Because this person's attitude was arrogant. And so he got knocked on his caboose. But look what he said. I mean, thank God for Saul. Saul was at least a man of God. He did love God. And and Saul said, uh, are you Lord? <laughs> I like that. Saul could have tried to get up. He could have tried to do everything in his own strength to try to, you know, exude his, uh, uh, you know, his, his, his way again. Instead, he had enough sense to say, I mean, right? And sometimes, just in your life in general, you need to say is, You, Lord, because you thought you knew him, but you didn't. You just came in a different mode. <laughs> oh, glory to God. Come on. So many people, they think they know the Lord, and he shows up in a different, he, he reveals himself in a different way to you, and you go, behind me, Satan. And the Lord goes, that ain't Satan, that's me. See, because you ain't never going to control God or get to the point where you think you can just know him and you don't need to grow in knowledge and understanding anymore. And you just running out there and tooting the word and you preaching from the pulpit and you know the Lord and you and him are just the pinnacle of existence and you don't need to know him anymore. And he's just your best friend, you and him. Uh-huh. You better fall down and reverence the living God and continue to honor and reverence that relationship. Because the minute you stop, do you know there's a saying? Here it is. I'm, I'm going to hurry up. You know there's a thing. Familiarity breeds contempt. You know people get so familiar with God, they just start getting loose. Now, I'll tell you something. That happened to me in my life at one point. Just very faintly. But it'll jerk the slack out of you. The Lord will show you, I'm sorry, mister. I don't know who you think you are. You ain't going to treat me like that. You think I'm kidding? It's not a joke. You'll find yourself in a bad place. Sick, defeated, broke, struggling, depressed, discouraged. You'll be wishing for a little bit of corn in a pig pen. Don't ever think you just get so familiar with the Lord in church. I'm, I'm going to have to refrain myself again because there's so many Christians. They just walk in and even when it comes to people, they go, hey, bro, what's up, bro? It's like, no, that's the pastor, you clown. How many 
people. They just, I've seen people in churches that talking, I mean, just such a, a lack of value. So he goes right here. Here it is. He goes, no, I'm Jesus. I'm Jesus. I'm Jesus. Now, there's a reason he said I'm Jesus. Because Paul already knew who the Lord was, didn't he? Old Testament, he knew that aspect of him. But Paul specifically, but Paul specifically had an encounter when he said, I'm Jesus. That's who I am. I'm not Buddha. I'm not Muhammad. Hmm? Right? And the rest of them. I'm Jesus. And he didn't even say, I'm Jehovah. He wanted him to know him by who he was now. I'm Jesus. King of kings and Lord of lords. My name is Jesus. Amen. All right, let me finish reading. I'm Jesus whom you persecuted. That's not something you want to hear. But rise now and get on your feet. For I've appeared to you for this promise. And to make you a minister and a witness both of these things. Now look, he says, delivering you from the people, from the Gentiles to whom I now sent you. Now here's what God tells them the gospel is. Open their eyes. So that must mean people's eyes are blind. Well, we know that. Turn them from darkness to light. From the power of Satan to the power of God. Receive forgiveness of sins inheritance among them that are sanctified by faith that is in me isaiah 53 real quick sanctified by faith in me how do you get sanctified by faith in the precious blood of jesus isaiah 53 gives us all that He was despised and rejected, taken by men, a man of sorrows. He was acquainted with grief and sickness. And like one whom men hid their faces, he was despised, and we didn't appreciate his worth or have any esteem for him. Surely he hath borne our griefs. Now, we're going to focus a little bit just on these two words our griefs and carried our sorrows so the word griefs means sickness not grief i remember when i first read this a long time ago before it was explained to me i thought grief if i say hey there's a lot of grief over there people would not they think what basic emotional turmoil not what it means that word grief means sicknesses weakness and distresses the word sorrows means pains. It says, he bore our griefs, our sicknesses, plurality, weaknesses, distresses, carried our sorrows and pains of punishment. Yet we ignorantly considered him stricken, smitten, God and afflicted as if with leprosy. That's what he said. That's what Isaiah 53 said. We considered Jesus stricken, smitten, Afflicted by God with leprosy. They say that because when they saw Jesus on the cross, he was already morphing from all the curse coming upon him. Think about everything coming on Jesus the curse, the beatings, the lashings, the whippings, the infirmities. How many remember the story in uh, the Old Testament? Was it Moses' hand or, or, uh, or his uh, sister? Moses, but, but she became a leper too. Miriam? Leprosy started kicking off in her. So when they seen Jesus, this is what he says, they identify him as with leprosy. How ugly he was looking. 
pull up some pictures of lepers on, on your phone. It's nasty looking stuff back then. He says, as with leprosy, here it is. Let me, let me um, finish. He was wounded for our transgressions, bruised for our inequities. The chastisement needful to obtain peace and well-being for us was upon him. And with the stripes that wounded him, we're healed and made whole. All we like sheep have turned away. We've turned everyone to his own way. Now look at, and the Lord hath made the light upon him, the guilt and equity of us all. He was oppressed, verse 7. He was judged. Here's the verse I want you to look at. As you, can you pass out the communion elements, Rich, please? Verse 10 says, yet it was the will of the Lord to bruise him. It was the will of the Lord to bruise him. He had put him to grief. He had made him sick. And he make his life an offering for sin. Now, that's what I like. God made him sick. So you could be well. When you and he, though, notice you and he do it together. When you and he make his life for what? An offering for sin. I was going to go over here to Luke 6, but I'm not going to, for the sake of time, I won't have time anymore. All sin is is the is the producer of sickness that's why jesus in the story it's in matthew 9 as well as luke 6 said to them he said thy sins be forgiven to the sick man and jesus said to them when they mocked him he says look that you may know the son of man have power authority and dominion to forgive sins on earth he said but which is easier to say thy sins be forgiven or take up your mat and go home it doesn't matter, does it? When you, uh, that's God's mindset. When you understand, because he understood that all sickness derived itself from original sin. Every, everything today that is a deficit, that is a sickness, it is a, uh, a, an infirmity, a virus, a disease. Everything today that you see existing today in the earth that has any form of sickness infirmity vexation torment and disease is a byproduct of original sin that doesn't mean somebody actually went out and sinned it's just a derivative now you can sin and open up the door that's what jesus said to that one person he said you know uh, caught him in the temple after what did he say he said go and sin no more lest the worst thing come on you so but right here he says isaiah 10 he says when you and he make his life an offering. See, God already placed all sin, sickness on Jesus. He was wounded. He was beaten. He was bruised. So, but when you and he, that means you take your faith and appropriate it and say, Jesus was my sin offering. He, he was my substitutionary sacrifice. But it's not something you just do in your head. It's something that has to occur in your faith and in your heart. and something you do consistently. The byproduct is this. I'm going to read this translation. Romans 6, 7. It says, For the dead, man is absolved from the claims of sin. For a dead man can safely be said to be immune to the power of sin. You and I are immune from the power of sin. If you believe the gospel. Amen. That's why the Bible says, reckon yourself dead to original sin and alive unto God. And that's why it says, now take your members and don't make them a servant of sin any longer. Make them a servant of righteousness. From righteousness unto a righteousness. And therein lies the problem many times in the earth. Give yourself, yield yourself, offer your body as a living sacrifice. See, there's the problem, the body. 
the spirit. The spirit's not the issue. It's the body and the soul. It has to be subjugated. Amen. By the power right here of this communion. That's why he tells us this. So bring him to remembrance. Amen. Bring him back to remembrance. So let's do that this morning. Amen. You guys got it? Stand up. Praise the Lord. I'll read this first part because I, I. Our Lord, by his sacrifice, has made for us a way into the pardoning grace. His was a truly spiritual sacrifice. His blood shed on the cross is the red seal of it. There is the true, there is the true mercy seat. And the power of faith, the power of faith, man. Not the power of your works. Not the power of your flesh. The power of your intellect. The power of your mama, grandma. The power of whoever. The power of faith. It's such that a man by faith can unite himself with the only victim in this world ever, friend. You are never a victim. I don't care what happened to you. There's only one victim. There's only, and, and the arm of the Lord ain't too short. Come on now. As a matter of fact, I just roused myself up the other day. I'm like, I'm, I'm close to getting my master's. I'm like, man, my friend's like, dude, let me hit you up right now. I just got my doctor. His brother just became a doctor of theology. And he's like, come on, I know you're close. You can get your master's at one shot, bro. I know. I'm like, I am. I've been wanting to do it. And then he just fueled me. You ain't too old. You're over nothing. Power of faith. Unite yourself with that divine victim. Think of that divine victim. He absorbed your sin, your sickness, your disease, your infirmities. And the by stripes, you and I are healed. We enter in. Father, we just thank you for your precious blood. We plead your blood over this place and over every person. And we thank you for the blood of Jesus reconciles to the perfect will of God. We thank you that you bore our sicknesses and carried our sorrows and pains upon us. And with your, with your stripes, beatings, lashings, and whippings, we became whole, well, and sound. We became the righteousness of God in Christ. We thank you for the love of God shed abroad in our heart. We honor you this morning. We thank you for your precious blood. You've redeemed us and bought us free. Christ redeemed us from the curse. Say, he bought me free. He redeemed me. I walk in divine health, free from sickness, free from illness, free from infirmities, free from vexation, free from torments. The spirit of him that raised Jesus from the dead dwells in me. He's making alive my mortal body today. In the name of Jesus. Uh -huh. Come on, my merry heart does good like a medicine. Ha, ha, ha. <laughs> Come on. Merry heart. Do you got a merry heart or a gloomy heart? Merry heart. By his stripes, I'm healed. Amen. Praise the Lord. Well, praise the Lord. Well, we thank you for being with us and we look forward to seeing you next time. This message was brought to you by Living Water Fellowship San Francisco. You can connect with us on Facebook or email us at sflivingwater.com.